Breaking news. Please stand by for another. C2C World News Now current event. We came, we saw, we died. This marks the end of a long and painful chapter for the people of Libya. Today, it's exactly five years now since Libya's long-term leader, Muammar Gaddafi, was deposed and slaughtered. He was overthrown after ruling that country for 42 years by rebels during the Arab Spring. Omar Gaddafi must leave. Your friends in Britain and in France will stand with you as you build your democracy. We came, we saw, we died. This marks the end of a long and painful chapter for the people of Libya. Hillary's huge uh, Libya disaster. 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 Libya is in chaos. Anarchy, political and military vacuum. Jihad is wonderland. Death, displacement and destruction. Is it fair to say Libya was better off under Gaddafi? Wow. <sighs> Unconfirmed. Unconfirmed. The Arab Spring began in 2011 in Tunisia, but quickly spread to other countries. Libya's unrest broke out in the city of Benghazi, a hotbed of opposition. Government forces brutally oppressed demonstrators, rapidly fueling nationwide chaos. At the time back then, RT host Nisanawi was in Libya shortly after Gaddafi's death. Please be warned, some of the pictures coming up here are upsetting. I think that at that point, the it was very clear geopolitically that either he would come out completely on top or he would be killed. When we got to the border, there were the rebels. Rebels had taken over the border completely um, with their Kalashnikovs. They were a little hesitant because I'm an American, so I had an American passport and I was with a Russian cameraman. And to them, that just didn't make sense. The Americans and the Russians should not be working together. Oh. Tripoli was celebratory, celebratory with gunfire, nonstop for three days. But there was still this heavy cloud over the city. I, I almost can't put it into words. And I remember being on uh, what was then already called Green Square and having this young little boy come up to me. He wasn't that young, he was about 12 years old. And his English was quite good. And him saying to me, they're celebrating. But people at home are crying. And they're terrified to share how they feel. Well, that was Nisanawi back then. Right now, the civil war in Libya continues. It's still ongoing. In fact, over the last couple of years, almost 5,000 people have been killed because of it. Rival Islamist groups are engaged still in a bit of fight for control with the internationally recognized government. With more on that, here's Ghani Chichikan. Spring 2011. Civil war is looming in Libya. Its leader, Muammar Gaddafi, threatens to crack down on the unrest in Benghazi. Reports of attacks against civilians evoke condemnation worldwide. The UN Security Council promptly adopts a resolution with a clear declared purpose to protect civilians through, quote unquote, all necessary means except for a foreign occupation force. Along with our allies and partners, we're enforcing the mandate of the United Nations Security Council. We're protecting the Libyan people from Gaddafi's forces. We intervene in, in order to enable the Libyan people to choose their own destiny. Military experts across the world know that a no-fly zone requires uh, certain uh, actions taken uh, to protect the planes and the pilots, including uh, bombing uh, targets like the uh, Libyan defense systems. October 20th, 2011, having struck Libya's defense systems, NATO goes after Gaddafi himself and helps kill him, accomplishing something for which it had no UN mandate. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> <laughs> 
It turns out it is too early to cheer. Libya quickly plunges into chaos. Extremists seize capital Tripoli, and Benghazi falls under the control of Islamist groups. President Obama admitted to the biggest mistake of his presidency. Probably failing to plan for the day after uh, what I think was the right thing to do in, in uh, intervening in Libya. Libya is just another one of those countries which too much interference from outside sources. Um, in my opinion, Gaddafi should have remained in power because he was some kind of a stabilizing force. But uh, the problem today is we have these diplomats that don't understand world affairs. They're really not good at it. And, and that's uh, in many different countries. So that was one of the biggest problems, uh, I think, in uh, Benghazi is our State Department getting involved in things they should not have been involved in. The aftermath of the intervention to many now stands as an example of what happens when regime change becomes the priority. In Washington, I'm going to check on RT. This has been a C2C World News Now current event. Stay safe, everyone.